Hey, what is up guys? Welcome to another video. In this video, I'll be going over Venn diagrams. I'll talk briefly about the notation of Venn diagrams and then I'll get into some exam style questions. So let's go ahead and talk about what a basic Venn diagram is made up of. Uh, so this is what a typical Venn diagram will look like. There's a rectangle and then two circles inside of it. So the rectangle represents the universal set and a set is a collection of things. It could be anything, it could be numbers, it could be people, it could be animals, um, anything you can think of, uh, a set is a collection of those things. So this rectangle will represent the complete set of all the things you're talking about. And then within that universal set, you might have two smaller sets represented by these circles. The symbol for a universal set, at least what I've seen in GCSEs, is usually kind of a capital squiggly E. Um, that's my best attempt at that, but anyway, that stands for universal set. So if I was saying um, the universal set is animals that live in the ocean, that could be the total of the things I'm talking about. And then my two smaller sets, uh, this one might be whales, and this one might be fish. And this allows me to categorize things and also find things that they have in common. Um, so it's a nice visual way of representing different groups of things. So for example, I could say a whale, uh, they have hair and uh, they, they have a live birth and also they breathe air. And then I have to consider the things a fish has that a whale does not have. So fish lay eggs, uh, they have scales and they obviously have gills or they breathe water. So when you're filling in the Venn diagram, you have to consider what, what this set has that this set doesn't have. And then you have to consider what they have in common. So they both live in water, obviously. They have fins and they can swim. Anyway, that you get the idea in that uh, within a Venn diagram, you have a universal set and you have sets within that represented by these circles, which have things that the other set doesn't have and they also have things in common. And so we have some notation that goes along with Venn diagrams. And uh, it looks like this. Um, so if I were to relabel these sets, if I were to relabel this set A and this set B, and I wanted to ask someone, what is everything inside both of the sets? So in A or in B. And we, we write that as A with a, a U and then B. And this is stated as A union B. This is saying everything inside A or inside B. So we'd have to look at all of the things inside A, inside the intersection and B. So if I were to shade that area, uh, if we were to highlight it or shade it, it would be everything in here, everything inside both circles. And uh, if I wanted to know what was inside this section here, What's common to both, I would write that as A with an upside down U, B. This is said as A intersect, B. Uh, and that's this region in here. One way to think about this is this symbol is kind of saying or, in other words, A or B, and this symbol is saying and. So it has to be in A and B in this middle section. So that's one way to help you remember it. Also, we might want to know everything that is not in A. So everything in this entire universal set that's not in A. And we would write that as A with a little comma. And this is stated as, as the complement of A. So that's saying everything outside of A in the rectangle. It can also be in B. But as long as it's not in A, that's the, that's the only thing that matters. And uh, then you could also ask for the complement of B, which would be anything outside of B. And then you can also have situations where you want the complement of A or the complement of B. Now that's saying it's, it's outside of A, or it could also be outside of B. And that gets more complicated because you have to consider it could be inside B, as long as it's outside A, or it could be inside A as long as it's outside of B. What that is asking is as long as it's not inside this intersection. And you can combine the notation of these different things 
um, to get different sets. But the most common ones that you need to worry about are union, intersect and complement. So let's go through some questions now. The first question says, 200 students at a school are studying for A-levels, 78 of the students study physics, 60 of the students study chemistry, 48 of the students study both physics and chemistry. Complete this Venn diagram representing this information. So they have filled in one section of the Venn diagram already and we need to fill in the rest. So we need the number of students doing physics, not doing chemistry, the number of students doing chemistry that aren't doing physics, and the number of students not doing physics or chemistry at all. And we need to work those numbers out. They tell us that 78 students study physics. If, if 48 also study chemistry, that leaves us with 30 who only study physics. So I've just done 78 minus 48 to give me 30 students studying physics. And I can do the same thing for chemistry. So if there are 60 students studying chemistry and 48 also studying physics, that leaves me with 12 who only study chemistry. So these two numbers need to add up to 60. Uh, so there must be 12 studying chemistry. And then I can work out how many students in total study both physics and chemistry. Uh, so I need to add up these numbers, 30 plus 48 plus 12. Well, that's 30 plus 60, which equals 90. So I have 90 students in physics and chemistry, so I need to work out the number of students outside of these two sets. I have 200 students in the universal set, so 200 minus 90, that will give me 110 students outside of these two sets. Okay, so that's all the information you need to include in a Venn diagram. You need the labels of these sets, you need the numbers inside the two sets and then the number outside of the two sets. Part B says one of these 200 students is chosen at random, work out the probability they don't study physics or chemistry. So that's basically asking how many students are outside of these two sets and we've already, already pretty much answered that. We've said 110 students don't study physics or chemistry. So this is going to be 110 out of 200, which simplifies two if we divide by 10 it will be 11 over 20. And then part two says, given that the student chosen studies chemistry, work out the probability that they don't study physics. Okay, so this is kind of a two part question. They tell us that the student is studying chemistry, so that limits the group down to this set. And we know there are 60 students in that set. So that's going to be the denominator. There's 60 students studying chemistry and we need the probability that they don't study physics. Uh, so that's going to be this number here, the ones that are not in the intersection. So 12 out of 60 will be the probability and that could simplify to one fifth if you like, but I don't think you would lose marks if you didn't simplify. Uh, so 12 out of 60 or one fifth is fine for two marks there. Question two says the Venn diagram shows the numbers one to 11, work out the probability of A union B. So remember, you can think of this as or. Uh, so if we want the probability of the number being in A or B. Uh, so we only have three numbers outside of A or B. So that means there must be eight numbers inside A or B. So this is going to be eight out of 11 for the probability. And uh, you might want to list them as well, just in case. If this is a, a two mark question, maybe you do have to list them out. So this is going to be one, two, three, five, six, uh, nine, 10, 11. So that's eight. And then part B says work out the probability of B complement. Remember B complement is all the numbers outside of B. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, maybe we should list them again just in case. So we've got one, three, four, six, seven, eight, eleven. And so the probability of B complement is going to be seven out of eleven. And that question was out of four marks. Question three says there are 60 students at a college, 20 students study both French and Spanish, 13 students study French but not Spanish, a total of 43 students study Spanish. Complete the Venn diagram for this information. So remember we need the number in French, the number in the intersection and the number in Spanish and also the number not studying either of them. And uh, they've already told us that 20 students study both. So we can put that straight in. Uh, and they tell us that th 
13 students study French, but not Spanish, so we can write that number straight in. And then they tell us that 43 students study Spanish, uh, so the number of students studying only Spanish will be 23, which is 43 minus 20. And then we're told there are 60 students at the college, so we need to add these up, 13 plus 20 plus 23, that's going to be 56. So that leaves us with four students not studying either French or Spanish. Okay, so that's for three marks. And then part two says one of the students at the college is selected at random. Write down the probability that this student studies neither French nor Spanish. Uh, so that's going to be the number outside of the two sets, out of the total. So that's four out of 60, which you could simplify to one out of 15. But again, I don't think you need to simplify in that case. Okay, that, well, that question was out of four marks. And then the final question says, a group of friends have been surveyed, 38% have been to Canada, 80% have been to France, 11% have been to neither Canada or France. Find the percentage of the group that have been to Canada and France. So on the surface, it's not a Venn diagram question. It's not asking you to fill in a Venn diagram or anything like that, but you can use a Venn diagram to help you answer it. You don't have to, but it might help. So we can draw out our Venn diagram, do a quick rectangle, and then the two circles inside. And uh, this could be Canada and this could be France. So if we're talking about percentages, obviously they need to add up to 100%. So that's going to be the universal set, which is 100%. And they tell us that 11% have been to neither Canada or France. So that's what I'm going to start with. There's 11% outside of these two sets. So that tells me the percentage inside these two sets must add up to 89%. 89 plus 11, that's 100%. I can use that idea to figure out the rest. Uh, so 38% have been to Canada. I can't write that in here because I need to figure out the intersection first. 80% have been to France. Okay, so in total, 80% have been to France. Uh, that leaves me with 9% who haven't been to France. So that means there must be 9% in this circle here that have been to Canada but not France. And if 38% have been to Canada, um, I can figure out what will, be, what will be in the intersection by doing 38% minus 9%. So that means there's 29% in the intersection and uh, the question was, find the percentage of the group that have been to Canada and France. So I don't need to figure out what is in here. I've already answered the question. So my working out there was that the total in these two sets must be 89%. I minus 80% from that to get 9%. That was the amount of students in Canada only. And then I did 38% minus 9% to find the amount in the intersection, which was 29%. So a slightly trickier question there. And then the second part says, one of the group who's visited Canada is picked at random. Find the probability they have been to France. Okay, so our group is, is the Canada set. And remember that was 38%. So that's our denominator in this, in this probability, 38. And then we want the probability out of that group that they've been to France. So that's going to be this 29% in this intersection. So the probability there is, is 29 out of 38. And I don't think that simplifies. So that's the final answer. And that's all the questions I'm going to go through in this video. I hope you found that helpful. I will include some practice questions in the description if you want to go ahead and do some revision by yourself. Um, and let's just go back to the notation again. Remember the union, which was or, so it could be an A, or B, so it's both of the circles, everything inside them. The upside down U, which was A intersect B, standing for and, so that had to be in both, which was this middle section, and then the little comma meaning complement of A, which was everything outside of A. Okay, so as long as you can remember those, you should be okay with Venn diagram questions. I hope you found that useful. Leave a like if you did, subscribe if you wanna see more content, and I'll see you in the next one, bye for now.